Good afternoon everybody and once again welcome back to another video. In this video I will be teaching you guys how to move data from Apache Kodi transactional data lake into Redshift. That is correct in an incremental fashion. Meaning anytime a new item is inserted or updated into your Apache Kodi transactional data lake uh, using glue we are going to fetch the data in an incremental fa fashion using incremental queries and then we are going to move those data into a Redshift cluster. So let's uh, learn how to do uh, that in this uh, particular video. Before we begin the video, there is two assumptions that has been made. A, that you have some sort of an Apache Kodi table and B, you have a Redshift uh, cluster already in place. I'm gonna be focusing on this video on the glue ETL part. So let's get started. All right, so the first step that we need to do is we need to head over to AWS Glue Management Console and we need to head over towards the connection in, which, is in, which is basically inside the data catalog. Once you click on the connection, you want to head over towards create connection, okay? Now, name this connection as Redshift connection, whatever you want to like. Make sure you select the connection type as JDBC and the JDBC URL you can find by going to your Redshift cluster. And if you scroll down here, you can see that's the JDBC URL, okay? So what we will do is you will put the JDBC URL over here then you'll put the username, you'll put the password from the network, make sure to select the VPC, make sure to select the subnet and make sure to select the security group and then click on create connection. This is very important, okay? So now if I click over here, the one I already have, I'm gonna click on edit so I can show you. Here you can see the name, right? Here you can see the JDBC URL, here you can see the username, the password and the VPC security group and the subnet, okay? So step one is pretty straightforward. You need to create a, a connector object. Now step two is focusing on the glue ETL part, which is the very crucial part. Now I have wrote a template for you so it will make your life so easy. Again, uh, this is about 400 lines of code, but again, this is a template and this makes your life very easy. So let's see, we come into the main function and again, if you want to load, uh, um, again, if you want to load data from one, two, three hoodie tables, then perform join, and then you want to load into Redshift, you can totally do that with this template. So this template, uh, you can simply provide, let's say you want to load a third table, right? You can simply provide uh, multiple objects. The type is two things, either full, full or incremental. Full meaning you want to load uh, the entire hoodie table and you want to load that into uh, Redshift. Incremental means every time you run, it's going to pull incremental data. Anytime new inserts are happening, anytime new updates are happening, you only want to pull those items uh, into your Redshift, right? So you can select the type as incremental. Uh, table name as orders, hoodie path. This is the path uh, to my transactional data lake. For now, I will choose the incremental option. Then we call the function load hoodie tables, which takes that object. And behind the scene, it will load um, that particular hoodie tables, right? Now here you can write your business query, meaning let's say you have one, two, three tables, you can do a join in, uh, join using Spark SQL, etc. right? But for now, I'm just saying select everything from orders. Hopefully that made sense. After that, I execute the Spark SQL query, I print the data frame on the, on, on the console, and this is where we insert the data into Redshift. Let's take a look. We have a Redshift option, and here you can see the JDBC URL, JDBC colon Redshift colon slash slash slash, then you have your Redshift cluster domain. You have your port 5439 and the database name as EDW, again. Uh, I'm gonna be inserting the data into uh, a schema landing uh, inside a table called orders. This is the username, this is the password, uh, again, attempt directory. Now, look how easy it becomes, right? So all I did is I, I provided, um, you know, type as incremental, I'm reading data from hoodie in an incremental fashion. I get the data as a Spark data frame, and then all I'm doing is simply per performing an append operation on my Redshift, right? So here you can see spark.write, format as JDBC, URL, database, username, password, temp directory, and mode as append. It's literally that easy, okay? So now let's, let's, let's run this code. So I'm gonna copy this code, uh, head over to your ETL jobs. You can click on Spark script editor and paste the code over there. So as you can see, I have an entire code over here. Make sure you go in the job details, the type as Spark, version as Glue 4.0. Uh, you can leave the workers to auto scaling, uh, again, depending upon your use case and your workload. Uh, 
then important thing is make sure you select use include data catalog as a hive meta store and then here you can see conf you got to provide the configuration data lake format as hoodie and that particular setting would be there on my github section also it's there in the code section so simply copy this configuration so this is the key this is the value right so that is what you see over here save the job let me make sure i have the job as incremental yeah i'm gonna copy this and simply paste the code over here click on save and now i'll be running the job before i run the job i want to show you that i do not have anything in redshift so if i go to my redshift cluster as you can see i do not have any data inside uh, this particular database edw schema landing and the table name is order if i execute i don't have any data right oops looks like let me click on select table run and again i don't have any data now i'll be running my template which will incrementally uh, pull data from hoodie and it's going to move the data into redshift so let's take a look at that process so heading over back to glue and i'm going to run the job now as you can see my job is now in the running state and this can take up to 5 to 10 minutes and once the job is complete i'll resume the video so my glue job has finally completed as you can see now it's in the completed state so this glue job uh, what it has done is basically it has fetched the data from hoodie tables in an incremental fashion it will store the last process commit on h3 and then again now we'll also verify the redshift right before we go into redshift uh, i want to go uh, into the s3 as you can see silver oh sorry not that my bad here this one here you can see the metadata and uh, hopefully you guys can see here orders.json i have already downloaded that particular file and you can see last process commit the table name path etc etc so this when you run the same glue job next time it's gonna load from the checkpoint it's gonna load the last particular commit perform an incremental query and load only the new data that has been arrived in your data lake into your redshift now uh, again sharing my screen back if we go back to redshift quickly and again i have run the query as you can see all my hoodie data is there in my redshift uh, now right hopefully that made sense so yeah uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and if you have any questions well let me know uh, let me let me let me sh uh, switch my screen i do want to give you a couple of tips and suggestions here so let's say you have multiple apache hoodie data like or transactional data lake and you want to basically build a view right so i would say you can use my template and then you can simply perform the join using spark and then load that particular data frame into your redshift right i also want to mention that aws has something called redshift spectrum so you can natively import all your hoodie tables if you have cataloged it right you can natively import them into redshift spectrum and and query that data i hope you have enjoyed the video all the resources code could be found on my github section if you have any more questions do let me know with that being said keep smiling keep programming and i'm gonna see you in the next video